Welcome to my lecture online. A few videos ago we made a video on the Voyager 1 travels to outer space and by now that small little satellite has reached a distance of about 15 billion miles which is about 24 billion kilometers. The question is how are we able to communicate with that satellite when it's that far away and it cannot give a very strong signal towards us because they have a very small power source. Matter of fact it is able to give us a signal with a strength of 22.4 watts which isn't very much. At a distance of 15 billion miles it takes almost a whole day to get to us and then it's so far away that it's diluted to a very 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 faint signal. Now if it was a antenna that could transmit in all directions such as a radio antenna for example uh, then the signal strength intensity would be down to 3.1 times 10 to the minus 27 watts because it would spread out in all directions but they were using a directional antenna where they put most of the power in the direction of the earth and so they're able to boost the signal strength so that the intensity of the signal by the time it gets to us is somewhere between 1 times 10 to the minus 21 and 1 times 10 to the minus 22 watts per square meter which is still extremely faint so in order to make sense out of the signal, in order to be able to hear it, we use what we call the DSN, the Deep Space Network, which has these enormous radio antennas, one that's as much as 70 meters across, that's almost the size of a football field. And by using this large collection area, we're able to boost the power received to about 1 times 10 to the minus 19 watts, which is still extremely faint. So we then use computers in order to signal to get the signal out of the myriad of information that comes from space from all directions at all different frequencies we need to get the one signal out that came from Voyager 1 and so we use a bandpass signal that blocks all the other signals and only allows reception on this one frequency that we're looking for because that's the frequency that the Voyager 1 uses but along with that one little frequency that we're looking for, we have all kinds of noise coming in that may be more powerful than the signal we're getting from that faraway satellite. So how do we get the actual signal out of the noise, which is much, more, which is much bigger, much stronger than the actual signal? Well, we use an amplification technique where we amplify the actual signal in such a way that we can then drown out the noise. We can lower what we call the noise floor and pull the signal right out above the noise so we can actually interpret it. That's all done using, using electronic equipment and computers to be able to do that. So yet, at a distance of 15 billion miles, which is like 24 billion kilometers, we're still able to communicate with the Voyager 1 spacecraft. Of course, we can set much more powerful signals to Voyager, so by the time it gets there, the weaker electronic equipment can still pick up the signal. But for us to get it from Voyager 1, which can only put out a very small signal strength we need to have very large antennas and very specialized compu computer equipment and electronic equipment to filter out that exact signal and yes we can still communicate from that far away and Voyager 1 just is continuing on in space further and further away from us it's now the farthest object that earth has ever sent out into space and it's now deep space just traveling away at very high speeds away from the earth and still letting us know how it's done. How long is the battery going to last? Not battery, but the... The power source, yeah. How, how long can it keep doing that? Well, it turns out it uses the decay of a radioactive material, and that decay will go on for hundreds and hundreds of years, so usable power will be available to Voyager for hundreds of years. I believe that the spacecraft will break down way before the power source runs out. So we should be good power-wise, but how is that satellite lasting for all these years out in deep space where temperatures are just absolutely enormously cold? Yep, it's still doing it. It's amazing what we were able to build back in the 1970s. So Voyager has to know where Earth is all the time, or does it just kind of send the direction? <laughs> There's the sun close enough. How does Voyager know where the Earth is? That is interesting. So it uses a methodology to keep uh, its position. So it, it uses, uh, I don't know if they had MMMIs back then. Uh, they use some sort of gyroscope technique to hold the spacecraft steady. They have computers that can compute where the Earth must be, which is close to where the Sun is. And based upon that, yes, it knows where to send the signal. It's quite amazing. 
and our dogs are beginning to play here, so <laughs> sorry about the noise. <laughs> All right, guys. Ah, uh, they're going at it. They're having fun. <laughs> okay.